What's going on guys? King Shrats here back in the video on the channel and today this is another burrito place I've done twice but I wanted to go back there and just see what it was like now because it was like three years ago the last time that I went to this place. This is Tito's Burritos and Wings. It is located in Ridgewood, New Jersey. They have other locations. I think there's like four across New Jersey but in somewhere in this general area but I haven't had any of this stuff and it was the first time I've actually physically been there believe it or not because the other two times someone else picked it up for me. So my first time seeing it. It's a real small place. Ridgewood has a main road where there's a lot of different uh, restaurants on it. Right next to a Dairy Queen. I didn't get anything because it would have melted by the time I got home. Ridgewood's not that far from me, but ice cream, you know, it wouldn't have made sense. The difference between this place and the other places that I noticed right off the bat is that most burrito places, when you walk in, they have the stuff in front of you so you can look at what looks good. It's in the kitchen. I don't know what they're doing back there, but this is what comes out. They just hand you your bags and you're on your way. I spent a lot of money because I wasn't sure what to get and I ordered half the menu. The guy just kept saying anything else and I was like, yeah, we're going to be here for a while, bro. So I got a burrito, I got a burrito bowl, I got an order of nachos, which look insanely loaded. And then I got, because they have Tito's Burritos and Wings is the name of the place, they do have wings. So I didn't get wings. I know y'all was like, what the hell? So I got these chicken strips, my first time looking at those, as well as some empanadas. I got two chicken, and that's criminal. Y'all, I'm just going to take these out, bro. This cost, I swear to you, this cost up $10.95, bro. $10.95. Now, I know they in Ridgewood. Ridgewood has got a whole different demographic. Like, Ridgewood is, I don't go to Ridgewood often. I'll just leave it at that. I'm, I'm not in that tax bracket. Hopefully, I will be one day, but today is not that day. But that is what's on the agenda today. Three different bags of chips and salsa because they all come for free. Man, let's get into this video. Okay, it's my first time looking at this burrito. It is massive. It did cost like $18, though. And there is everything in here that I could possibly fit. I can't even remember half of it. I was just checking everything that I could possibly check off. I do remember that there is steak and chicken in this, though. It's expensive, but it is a fat burrito, just so you know. All right, let's try this. That's pretty damn good. That is bad. Hold on. I got cilantro lime sauce in here. And fries. Now it's coming back to me. They do make fries there, so you can put fries in a burrito. That's good. What is this? I don't know. Let's put it on. I don't remember what the hell I got. What is this? This is good. Mmm. I don't even know what the hell it is. It's like a Chipotle mayo. It's all over my mustache. That's fine. The chicken is blackened chicken, so it has like a blackening seasoning on it. It's not plain tasting at all. The steak, not chewy, not rubbery. And the fries, I think I paid an extra two dollars. The fries just make this, man. Look at this. Really, really good. I'm gonna be honest with you. Of the burritos I've eaten probably in the last like six months, this is easily the best one. The steak is in huge pieces too. Mm. I'm here for this. I'm really here for this. I don't know if you're near this place, but this this is this is a solid ass burrito. This is like a 9.2 out of 10 burrito on a chain scale. And in recent memory, easily the best one I've had. I took 50 bites of this and I still have this much left. And I'm pretty sure... Yeah, that's like a Chipotle mayo. I think it's for the empanadas. But it is really good. Also got some pico and some ranch here, but... Let's try the rest of this stuff too. I got an order of nachos. These are loaded nachos. Comes with pico, black beans... Obviously, a ton of melted cheese on here, and I got sautéed shrimp. Shrimp is an option that's not at enough burrito places, in my opinion. Let me see if I can get in here. I don't want to grab the nucleus, but... I can rock with this. This is also another thing. Let me try this guac, because now I'm a guac guy. Hold on. I'm sure these are better if you eat them in the restaurant. I know somebody's going to think that, but one, i am be honest with you. Similar to like a Chipotle, how they had to sit down, they bring you your food though. I swear to God, doing that, 
And it was packed. There wasn't nowhere to sit. I was standing up waiting for my food. So I couldn't if I tried, but I grabbed the nucleus. That's okay. More places, in my opinion, need to have nachos on their menu like that. I don't know why I don't serve them. They have all the ingredients to do so. The shrimp, let me just try a piece of the shrimp by itself. I mean, the shrimp isn't really shrimping. It's not undercooked or anything like that, but compared to like the blackened chicken that's in here, there's not really much going on. But you can work with this for sure. I don't know why. I might be in the minority here, but I actually like when nachos get like this. A lot of people like them when they're crispy, but I don't mind it when they start to like get that little congealedness. I still rock with them. This is one of the few foods that I think I like better when it marinates. I don't need it to be like fresh off the grill because 90% of the time that they're cooking their food, when you go to like a Chipotle and stuff like that, it ain't fresh anyway. Like it's been sitting there. It's very rare you walk in and they're just making your stuff. But I think they do make your like proteins to order here. I can't verify that though. I think this costs like 15 bucks. Their prices are a little high in my opinion, but it's in Ridgewood. So I expect it. I would give this in solid 7 out of 10. It's good, but there's nothing about it that stands out compared to anything else. Maybe I should have just picked a better protein though. Could have been on me. Why didn't y'all tell me? I almost forgot. I ain't gonna bev. Gotta go and get a bev. Gotta go and get a bev. Hold on. I know you gotta look at it. Look at him. There is an alarming amount of people that don't get the joke behind this cup. I don't have kids. Stop congratulating me. All right, so let's try this burrito bowl. This is called the Mac Daddy Steak Burrito Bowl. You know, you would think there'd be Mac in it. I don't know why it's called that, but it's called the Mac Daddy Steak. I forget what's in it. I just picked it right off the menu. I wanted to get one of their, okay. This is the first time, a little, little rice, a little, little bit of. Let me get some of this. I, I like their steak. Let me just, you gotta mix this though. Trip. You can't just eat this like this. It has to be mixed. There we go. So it's got rice, steak, cheese, sour cream, guac, and pico from what it looks like. I don't know why they called it that. It also costs $17, $16.95. Listen, man, I, I know food prices is rising, but this is just, this is about the going rate now, man. It's just, this is what it is. So I, I'm not going to sit here and complain. If this is what it costs, this is what it costs, but... Someone needs to not make it cost this. Ooh. Nah, y'all not sure. Y'all need to get in the gym. The chips need to get in the gym. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't like when y'all can break. Dang. Okay. Now we're there. All right, here we go. It's pretty standard. They're pretty standard. I remember when I went to this place the first time. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. But I've tried so much food at this point, it's going to be much harder to impress me. Am I in, by any means saying that this is nasty? Nope. I personally, if you're going to get anything from here, even any of these places that have their own like pre-made type of stuff, don't do it. Make your own and put your flavors in there that you want. Because compared to this with all the stuff going on in here, this just comes off bland. It's really not their fault. I just don't think, like, hold on, let me get a little. Yeah, like the pico ain't really pico. In. It's there, but it ain't, you know, compared to the other stuff. I know if I would have put, like, that crema on there and all that. So, that's kind of my fault. But, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't doing what it's supposed to do. Let me, um, I got more pico. Let me try this pico by itself, because this pico was alarmingly didn't taste like anything. All right, so we got their pico here.
All right, I'm just making sure my taste buds still work. I'm gonna leave it at that. Make your own if you're gonna come here. That, not hidden. I'm actually like surprising. It's like shockingly mid. I'm just because I'll be trying. Let me just no, let me just do let me let me. Not, yeah. Let me tell you, this stuff is like Allen Iverson on the Sixers in the early 2000s carrying with that bowl. Seventeen dollars for this is, is I'm I'm trying to be nice. I'm gonna be nice. I mean, seventeen dollars for this it, it's not what you want. So I'm gonna respectfully, off of flavor alone, give this a five on the burrito chain scale. But including again that this costs seventeen dollars. If you include that in it, it, I would never get this again. Again, it's not inedible though, so don't get it twisted. I'm not saying it's nasty. You know, some people believe, oh, it's nasty. I'll still eat it, but it's going in here. I got an order of chicken strips. These chicken, I feel like I'm complaining this whole time, but I'm just giving you what it costs. You get six chicken strips for $12.95. This is a chicken strip. This is their hot, sweet, and sticky. They have a ton of different sauces. They call these ribbon strips. No. I bet y'all didn't see y'all had me in the first half of this video compared to what this is. No. The sauce isn't bad. It's got a little heat that kicks in at the end. But it tastes like a, like a spicier, like a chili sauce. But again, it's, it's not special. And for $12.95 for six chicken strips, in my opinion, you got to be special. I'm gonna be fair. I'm gonna give you the whole rundown. They are crispy. They are white meat. It just tastes like a good, a decent chicken strip. They're good. But again, I know prices on food is crazy, but I'll put it this way. If I just go to Walmart and get like chicken strips and put like whatever chili sauce they have on there, I would have the same effect. And that's where it's like, okay, this this is crazy. So, I don't know why I keep dipping in that when this good-ass burrito is here. That's a little depressing. That, same thing. Very average. I would give it a 5 out of 10. I don't dislike them, but there's nothing about that's going to make me say I love them. I didn't try their ranch, though, so let's try the ranch. Let's try that ranch. Not mad. The ranch does kind of hit. I'm not a big ranch guy, except for Wingstop. But their ranch doesn't seem like just straight up like cheap ranch or anything like that. Some places they buy them big bulk things of ranch and they're not good. But that seems like there's something to it. With the ranch, I would probably bring that up to like a six. Now you're talking. Twelve ninety five to me is still a bit much. But let's try their empanadas again. You get two in an order, and they're ten ninety five. I've eaten a lot of empanadas now. Ten ninety five for two empanadas is crazy, but I'm gonna keep saying this over and over again. This is in Ridgewood. People in Ridgewood, that ain't nothing to them, and there's no places making empanadas in Ridgewood. So this is chicken. They had two different kinds. I picked the chicken. Please, at least taste good. There's cheese in here, huh? Man, there's cheese in here. It's okay. Like, there's, it's real chicken. I'm pretty sure somebody made these by hand, which is really nice. But the chicken is a little, not a great bite. It's a problem with me with a lot of chicken empanadas, not just these. Like, even mom and pop places, I have that issue. But, well, done. even mom and pop restaurants, like, this is a franchise, but there's only, like, three or four of them. It's Ridgewood. Even mom and pops charge way less than this, bro. Some of them do charge you, like, $5, though. I ain't gonna lie. So, this is on the higher end. Do I think it's great? No. Do I think it's bad? No. But this is better than the other stuff that I've had. I would give these a six. Again, it's just more or less, for, for what I'm paying for, just, I love this Chipotle mayo, though. 
Like, you could have put anything in there, and it's still going to work. And I do like the addition of the cheese, to be fair. And it's not dry. It's just not a good chew with the chicken. But I don't really like chicken. I said that already. I don't dislike them, but I just, I wouldn't buy them again. They're not worth what I paid for them. They're being real. So I'll give this a 6 out of 10. So being fair, like most burrito places, you have to find your order. I know people argue that contention point with Chipotle in different places. Um, I did like their steak. I would 100% get this burrito again. Like this, I really like this. Is that a piece of lettuce? How the hell did I get in there? I think it's guac. This one would get again. But it just, it's, it's very expensive. So I wouldn't drive that far just to get it. It's cool with the fries in there. A lot of burrito places don't do that. So just having that little bit of option difference would give it a little bit of a standout as opposed to anything else. Again, if you've ever been in this area and had it, I would suggest that you try it, but make sure you bring your wallet. <laughs> okay, so I have a, a special request topic. Um, this is different, but if you feel the need to do this, by all means, please do. I got tagged on TikTok. Um, someone who watches the channel, obviously, make, they must have me on TikTok as well, and they tagged me in a video and said, please react to this on your YouTube. And I happened to see it, so I'm going to react to it. More or less, this video is a man. Now, I'm going to be completely real before I even get into this. This is one of those things I've talked about before. There's a lot of people, in my opinion, that are putting skits out on the internet. That they're not saying it's a skit in order to go viral. And I think this is that. I don't think it's real. But what I like about these skits is that they do give you real-life scenarios. These things that happen in the skits may be a little overcooked. Yeah. But those types of things do happen. It's not a fake scenario. It is just a fake actual like skit. But the situations are feasible. Well, in this case, it's a guy who, for some reason, decided to take a camera out and place it on a table and have a conversation with a woman who's not in the video at all, of course, because she wouldn't want her face shown in the damn video. It reminds me of the Cheesecake Factory thing, which I also think was fake. But, mind you. This woman asked this guy out, and he says it repeatedly. You're the one that asked me out, because um, she wanted to go out to eat. So they went to what looks like in the background is a bar and grill, and the bill came out to $320. Now he said, I'm not paying $320 when you're the one that asked me out. And they were arguing about it. He said, I'll pay my half or whatever it was, but I'm not, you ran up $320. I'm not paying. Now, I'm not sure if they were dating. I guess that would matter. If you're dating, you would know your person a little bit more. But even if it just was a date, which it seems like it, you want to react to it, I'll give you my take. One of the main things I've always heard, including from women, even the fairest of women, do I think there's some men and women out here who are a little delusional when it comes to dating? Sure. But even the fairest of women and men usually say, if I take someone out, if I ask you out, then I should pay. I agree with that. I do. But if I ask you out, and even if I expect you to pay, I do think it's a little crazy to run up a $320 bill. I'm not trying to flex here, but even before I became a food blogger, I've always had a pretty expensive palate. I eat at steakhouses, expensive steakhouses. I used to. I don't do it anymore because of my job. A lot in the past. And the most expensive of steakhouses. You know, people like to go to places like Ruth's Chris. There are more expensive places, but even those type of places. If I go and I take a woman on a date there, which I have before... And they order whatever the hell they want. I order whatever the hell I want. That includes usually multiple appetizers for two people. Multiple appetizers. Um, obviously, we both get steak of some sort, which usually, depending, is between $50 and $80, depending on what you get. Um, whether it's a filet or a porterhouse, etc. They can go up to $100 and change, but usually it was between $50 and $80. Uh, the sides, which at a steakhouse are like, like family style, meaning you order like two or three or sometimes four, which we have sides. And... You share them, but they're expensive. Getting both individual desserts 
and getting drinks the entire time. Usually, I'll order a bottle of wine, and we'll drink that. Or, if she wanted, she would get a drink. I'll get a drink, and we probably have like two or three a piece. Even doing that, the bill usually came out to three fifty. I mean, expensive steakhouse. They were not an expensive place. You can tell by the way they're dressed. It's super casual. It looks like a bar and grill. I don't think it's an Applebee's or something like that, but it's a bar and grill. You, at that point, would have had to order everything and, like, 10 drinks to get that bill to that high. Again, as a person who works, I order food for a living. You would have had to order a lot of drinks or something else. $320 at, like, an Applebee's for two people or a bar and grill, which might be a little more expensive than Applebee's, is, is like... You weren't playing. You were trying to run that bill up at that point. So, I can understand, again, in this scenario, why someone would be heated about that. I'll be honest with you and give you just two different things. I'll give you what I think should have happened, um, which I just did, like, morally, and what I would have done in that situation. So, I think that the guy is in the right in this case. Because I think it's really impolite to invite yourself, saying, hey, I want to take you, can we go out, and then ordering whatever the hell you want. It just seems a little weird. If they're dating, at that point, you should know your person well enough to know what they do for a living. And if you're not dating, you don't know that person. And I just think it's hella disrespectful. I wouldn't, I don't even do that to my parents, bro. Like, I don't like being like that when I know I'm not paying the bill anywhere. If I'm out with my friends... Or anything like I, I've had in situations where my parents are like, okay, let's let's kind of take you out. You know, my parents say you'll know, celebrate, um, or like you know, I've dated my girlfriend, my ex girlfriend, whatever. Their parents say, can we? I don't go on those places and just start running up the bill because I just think it's rude. And usually people will be like, money, don't worry about it. I got it. I get that. But at the same time, I'm not gonna be like, you know, give me the lobster. I don't do that. I just think it's rude. So I understand where dude is coming from, and I would have been annoyed too, personally. If that was a first or second or third not girlfriend date, I more than likely would have paid the bill and never talked to that person again. Like, this is one of those things that some people, it's more of a woman thing because most men expect to pay, but you look at it and say, like, 320 is a lot of money these days, bro. Again, like, jobs are just crazy out here. So, that's not the type of person I want to be with if you're trying to spend $300 at the Chili's. You know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, let's just go to like, get into this place if you really want to be like that. It also just gives me the impression that you're, like, the type of person that you don't mind spending other people's money. That's not the type of people I like being around. But the adage that women say when it comes to this kind of stuff more than men is if you're broke, just say that. To me, what she did is if you're broke, just say that activities. Because, dude, because it's not your money, you don't normally eat like that. And now you're just acting like money and no object because you ain't... I, I don't like... It's not the money for me when it comes to stuff like that. I'm not speaking on behalf of all men, but just me at this point. It's the principle behind it. I don't care about spending money on someone I'm with, especially if that's my, if you're my girl, like if I got it, you can get it. But if I feel like you just trying to spend it because it's not yours, now I don't feel right. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're the type of person that just wants, wants because it's not yours and you're constantly spending, I just don't think that we would be a good match. If I'm dating someone, at this point, I'm a grown ass man. I date somebody. The intent is the end game, right? I'm looking to eventually make some kids, have a family, have a house, have a wife, whatever you want to call that stuff. I might not be a person who wants to get married per se, but I still believe in monogamy at the end of the day. So I'm looking to settle down, right? I don't want to settle down with somebody that can run me into debt. And some people don't look at that. I don't care how rich you are. You can go broke. Especially if I'm working my ass off to put everything on the table and you're just like, I don't care. It ain't my money. One of the things that a lot of women don't realize. And again, a lot of my friends are married. Um, a, a lot of a lot of people, obviously, in my age bracket are married from a male perspective, something that they won't argue with their wives about. But they will sit there and, and complain because they're tired of complaining to them. A lot of men are get annoyed at their wife's spending habits. I know in some families, in some houses, this is the guy. I'm not saying, but I'm just telling you from my own group of people that I know, a lot of people that I know that are married, they all complain because they're like, I come home and there's 20 Amazon boxes on the floor. My wife's just like, ha, ha, ha. I told you we needed this, that, and a third and half the stuff we didn't really need. 
and they just kind of spend it because they didn't really earn it. And it's not that you can't have things. I'm not saying that, but anybody in here, regardless of your gender, you know, if you, if you work and it's your money you're spending, you are not as free spending as when it's somebody else's. Like you did it when it was your parents. I don't know if anybody ever had like their parents with them. I remember when I used to come home from college and we go, I, or my parents would come visit me. We go right to Walmart. Bro. I'll run up $300 real quick because I'd be throwing shit in the cart. And luckily my parents were cool enough that I had a scholarship so they would let me buy it. But looking back, like I, like I would never do that if I had worked for it. You get what I'm saying? Like you tend to value things harder when you work for that money. And something that I, even women that are employed, like when y'all go out with y'all girls, I know y'all don't just be go, putting your card on the table to my, y'all can get whatever y'all want to when it's just you. But if somebody else got the tab, you like F it, F it, F it. And I know dudes do the same stuff. I don't know if I'm just rambling at this point, but my, my main thing was I just find it a very unattractive quality to be with someone who is going to spend, spend, spend um, just because. And I could be a millionaire or a thousandaire or a billionaire. If I just feel like you're just running up tabs for no reason, just because you can, it makes me feel like you don't really care about the well-being of everybody. You're just doing it because you can do it. Um, I, personally, this is all personal. I'm not giving you other people's point of views. Understand this. You're, normally, I give you a broad spectrum, but he asked for my reaction. So one of the things that I value in a potential partner is a partnership. I don't care where the money comes from. I'm the type of person that I would rather have a, 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 a wife or a baby mother or, or a, a significant other, a long-term partner, I'm going to call her. Um, I would rather have one that didn't work, but I don't care if you work because if you have a career, I'm not going to make you stop doing it. Like that's an adult decision. That's fine. But if you're not working, if you need something, it's it's I, you, as long as we talk about it and you're not just buying just because you can, because I don't buy stuff because I can. And I'm a gainfully employed human being who lives by himself, but I don't buy things just because I can with my own money. So I just need that kind of frugalness, not cheapness, but frugalness to understand that. I don't want to have boxes of stuff downstairs that you just collect dust because you just wanted to have it at the, at the time. I need someone personally who's a little more grounded in that kind of stuff. And and even though I, I do OK in life, I still don't live that way. Yeah, like I think in the past year, other than equipment and food, I wear the same twenty dollar hoodies, the same crusty ass beanie. And it, I'm living better than I was two years ago. You get what I'm saying? So I wouldn't date nobody like that. I'd have paid the bill and been like, you know what, if you broke, just say that and dipped out. <laughs> that's what I would have said like here take your little your little dinner and then go find somebody else to do the shit with again like the, the money is not worth the headache at that point but it ain't even about the money because I'll still pay for it but you'll never see me again that's just what it is so just be careful man again I always say this before I get out of here there's no right or wrong in relationship preferences so if you're a person who says I'd rather have somebody that they don't care and I want to spend his money in it, you're not wrong for that other people may be cool with that just find someone that you're compatible with and date them that's just ain't gonna be me. You know what I'm saying? No. It's my sippy cup. But I love y'all, man. You can't really see it in the background, but I'm in the process of building a computer. <laughs> and it's like literally right in, in behind me. Um, so I gotta get back to that. So I really didn't wanna overeat today. But I know who's, they can't, I'm not giving this away, but everything, I don't know. I'll probably still keep this, to be honest. There wasn't a lot of sour cream in it, so it's just steak and rice. But we'll be back tomorrow. More content, man. The hand signs, they made it to YouTube.